Hello everyone. Our project is called City Pave and it was developed by Adrian Flores, Ellen Atienza, Andrew Gonzalez, Brian Chu, Christian Esquela, Christopher Ortega, Justin Nim, Kayleen Ponce, Mark Kalaiji, and Don Mark Juarez. And our academic advisor is Dr. Nagin Faruzesh. And our liaison is Dr. Mehran Mazari. And now on to Justin. Hi, my name is Justin, and I'm here to discuss what City Pave is. And to go into that, we should talk about the purpose of City Pave. So, what the purpose of City Pave is a web application that helps create uh, pavement calculations in a simple and easy to use way. Next slide. The way that we do accomplish this is by creating an easy to use interface that reduces the amount of iterations that are needed to perform a task. The way that we do this is by making it very easy to navigate. So it's very easy to just click into your project and then go into your calculations. We also make the page dynamic. So when you input a certain input inside, the forms will change based on what you put inside. We also added tooltips to make it easier for users to understand what needs to be inputted into these text boxes. We also made the website more professional and more enjoyable to use. The way that we did this is by following us, uh, by setting up a standard style guide. And the style guide that we chose to use was the Cal State LA style guide that is provided on the Cal State LA topography. And we also created forms to make it easier to punch in calculations for basic pavement, overlays, life cycle costs, and pavement design databases. Uh, next slide. So the way that we differ from other programs is that we reduce the amount of clutter that's around because a lot of websites provide a lot of information that goes beyond what these calculations are. So it's hard to find what you need to calculate for. In addition, we made the functionality a little bit easier by having these dynamic pages. So it's easily like changing based on the user input. So they don't need to select and change based on what they want. Uh, it's also, we made it very easily accessible because all you need is just a web browser and an internet access. So you can access our web page and then log in and then get into your projects and then do your calculations. And we also have it on a database, which helps it be remotely accessed. Next. And uh, I'll let you talk, have Mark take over for technologies. Thank you, Justin. So CityPave is a full stack web application built with many technologies and frameworks. Various tools and technologies went into building this website from the ground up. Since the fall, a lot of what we were using has remained but there have been some changes and additions. Firstly, it is still built with JavaScript, specifically Node.js. This allows us to use NPM or Node Package Manager, which allows us to add many modules to our code to help in the construction of the website. Next, for the UI of our website, we used Vueify. Vueify is a UI component library built upon Vue.js we felt the addition of Vueify instead of just solely Vue.js would make for a better impact on the UI and UX of our website. These technologies are the core of our front-end production. Regarding back-end production, a lot of the technologies I've mentioned last time have also remained the same. Most importantly, MySQL. MySQL is the brain of our website as it is responsible for storing all of our users' project data when making an account on CityPave. Additionally, a new module we added this semester is SQLize. SQLize is a powerful library that makes it easy to manage a SQL database by mapping an object syntax onto our database schemas. Something else that we have newly incorporated is email routing with Zoho. This allows us to have a contact page where our users can reach us. So once the project was nearing completion, we knew it was time to host it publicly. We needed a domain for this, so we used Google Domains. Originally, we had plans to host our website on AWS, but we ran into some problems which caused us to turn to Heroku. 
Heroku is also a website hosting service and worked well and seamlessly with our source code. These technologies are the core of our backend production. Finally, the most important tool that helped us in the production of this website was GitHub. GitHub allowed us to all put our individual work on a branch, which in turn, at the end of the week, I would merge with the master branch and repeat the process again for the coming week. This really helped us in our productivity and collaboration by making everything seamless and in sync with every other team member. Thank you, and now on to Adrian. Uh, hello there, I'm Adrian Flores. In terms of the visual components, at the beginning of our project development, our front-end team was given free reign over the visual aspects of the website, and it was very early on that we tested and decided on the current color scheme. Uh, as you can see, it uses a lot of yellow and white in tandem with varying degrees of dark and gray colors. And for this, the CSULA style guide served as a point of inspiration for us. And as you can see, they have a similar color palette. So this was chosen because of the high contrast nature of the colors that made things pop and visually appealing. And also it worked thematically with the main focus point of our website, which is pavement design. And this styling was done using CSS. And of course, modularity is always an important principle to abide by when it comes to coding and just design in general. And it was no different here. So of course, for something like background color or other things like headers and buttons, we want consistency throughout the site. So we made that part of our main CSS, whereas something like text color or other minute details can be determined on more of a case by case basis. Another interesting note is that we made the site mobile compatible, so the dimensions, layout, and the navbar will adjust according to the device it's being used on. And with the main purpose of the site being the use of scenario forms for a project, it is a team goal to make it as easy as possible to use the tools the website has to offer. And a major part of reaching that goal was finding ways to make things easily distinguishable and straightforward. And one way we achieve this is through the use of our dynamic navigation bar located at the top of the site. As you can see, it currently allows the user to access the register, login, and contact page. And the nav bar is our main point of movement around the site and lets you access all the necessary pages and pop-ups to fluidly move throughout the website. Next slide. So when we click login on the nav bar, a login pop-up comes up where the users can input their email and password. And from here on out, they have access to all of the projects that they're working with. Uh, once the user logs in, as you can see on the next slide, uh, the options in the navigation bar change and allow them to access different functionalities that they weren't able to before, such as the page that stores all their previously filled out project forms, and it also gives them the option to log out. Uh, the page currently displayed is our project page and keep it in line with our previous principles of making sure the site is easily distinguishable and straightforward to handle and traverse. Uh, much like the nav bar, we decided to use another staple of modern and minimalistic website design. And this time it's in the form of card-based color-coded projects. So whenever a new project is created, uh, once the base information is inputted, then a card uh, is created and the color is generated to differentiate that project. Finally, once you click on these cards, it'll allow you to access the form page for that respective scenario. And next up is Andrew. Thank you, Adrian. A view with the addition of Viewify has helped lead this project to success. To begin, Vue is an organizational front-end framework used to help organize JavaScript within the website. As seen in the image to the right, every section created for the website is allowed to have their own HTML, CSS, and JavaScript associated with the allowing for individual design, functionality, and separation of concerns based on the necessary parts of the website. Beautify helped with user-friendly UI as well as easily usable libraries for creating sections on the website. Next. Validation and input ranges were essential when pertaining to the calculations and user inputs. The validation and input ranges allowed the group to control what could be inserted to certain fields, such as strings and numbers, and the range in which they were accepted. Certain fields required only positive numbers, as entering the negative number or one out of the range would destroy the foundation of the calculations. Most of the validation was done in the background using Vue's built-in validation functions and triggered when the user unfocuses from a field or attempts to move beyond the current page. Next. For dynamic tabs, 
it allowed the user to accurately switch between different methods and scenarios, minimizing the amount of pages necessary for the application. As seen in the little video clip uh, below, it allowed the users to switch easily without needing to change the, play, the page completely, allowing for easy accessibility to different methods, as you see in the little video there. And now on to Brian. Thanks, Andrew. Hi, I'm Brian, and I'll be talking about some of the calculations we used. Our goal is to calculate the thickness of the new asphalt layer for our pavement. The first equation you see is used to calculate the minimum required structural number for asphalt pavements. What we want is to find an SN on the right-hand side of the equation so that both sides are equal. But we'll have to evaluate the other variables in the equation first. Next slide, please. The W18 on the left-hand side is the total design ESALs, which are the equivalent single axle loads. If the user already has that number, fantastic. They can click on the design ESALs button at the top and enter the number manually. If they don't and need to calculate it, however, they can simply click on the calculate from AADT button and enter the necessary inputs to calculate the ADT. Same goes for load equivalency factor, or LEF. The total design ESALs you see on the bottom will automatically compute as the user enters values in each input. So that's it for the left-hand side. Now for the right-hand side. Next slide, please. The ZR value is typically gathered from a table similar to the one you see here. To make it easy on the user, next slide, please. We made it a drop-down menu where the ZR value will change based on the reliability level the user picks. The combined standard error, or S0, is a manual input. The change in serviceability index, or delta PSI, is a simple calculation where you take the difference between the terminal and initial serviceability indices. Next slide, please. The subgrid modulus, or MR, can either be an input or calculated based on CBR or R value. Now that we have all those numbers, we can finally go back to the original equation. Next slide, please. The only thing we're missing now is the SN. The most efficient way to calculate it is to iterate the SN until both sides are equal. And we do that using a simple loop. Once both sides are equal, we finally have the minimum required SN. But that wasn't our goal. Our goal was to find the pavement thickness. The bottom equation uses the pavement layer thicknesses to calculate an SN that must be larger than the minimum required SN we had just calculated above. We do this by iterating D sub 1 until the resulting SN is larger, and that resulting D sub 1 will be the thickness of the asphalt layer. These equations were taken from the U.S. Department of Transportation website, which referenced the 1993 ASHTO design method. Next up is Omar from the back end. Thanks, Brian. Um, so for all the scenarios, um, we created these forms uh, that allowed for the user to input values. And once the user inputs these values, they're going to be saved into our uh, database uh, server. And in this uh, database, we also, um, along with the values that are inputted, we also saved in the project ID, which is going to tell us which specific project these um, tables relate to. Uh, next slide, please. And how we went along with creating these tables is by using SQLize. And what SQLize basically is, is a NPM module that uh, allows us to manipulate SQL tables through our JavaScript code. And um, what we have to do for these tables to be created is to create a model for every single table we're going to be using. And these models um, contain all the necessary information for creating the tables. So they have the name of the table and what type of information is going to be saved in it. And uh, once you create these models, then SQLize checks if um, the tables exist in your ser database server or, and if they don't, um, it creates it. And um, next up is Alan. Thank you, Omar. Uh, last semester in the fall, I helped the back end in terms of creating a visual guide, as well as creating some of the inputs for the tables needed for the scenario type determined pavement structures. I also applied the same logic this spring to create the tables for the scenario type analyze pavement structures. But this time, instead of creating a visual table or guide, the back end created a Google Sheet that had each scenario we wanted to implement for the spring as shown on the screen. This sheet contained the different tables, parameters, types, even the different scenarios, as well as their importance. Uh, creating the tables was simple until I realized that most of the tables for analyzed payment structures have nested information. 
If you look at the next slide, for example, in cross sections, there may be more than one layer type. And it was a question of whether I should create one big table or create nested tables that are related to each other. At the end of the day, the way it's implemented doesn't matter because the bottom line was to make sure that the user input saved and it's easy to follow. To illustrate, as shown on the next slide, I did decide to implement nested tables. As you can see, each value from the cross-section analyzes table may have multiple values in the cross-section layers analyzes table. Were there any other challenges? Of course. Another challenging part of this process was connecting the code from the front end to save the user inputs to the database. A lot of the time I was collaborating with Andrew. This was because he was in charge of the front end design for analyzed payment structures. After various exchanges, trying to connect the front to back end was all in all tedious, but I was able to connect what Andrew and I both worked on to save the user inputs to the database. This meant that you may insert information in the analyzed payment structure scenario until location responses X, Y. With that in mind, I will pass the mic over to Christian. Thanks, Alan. So the city PAVE application uses API calls to facilitate communication between the client side and server side to perform tasks other than creating new rows of data, such as retrieving information about an already existing project so that the corresponding values populate on the current page that the user is on. Also, updating payment design values as well as project names on already existing projects and deleting projects that aren't needed any longer. These functions use project ID, which help the API calls identify the correct rows or rows to perform actions on. Next slide. The different tables that correspond to the different forms are related by the project's ID that they are part of. When the user initializes a new payment project, the project ID gets saved to BUX and is applied to every subsequent table that is created within that project, therefore making the project ID the foreign key that connects tables together. This relationship between the project and other tables is what makes the API calls function without difficulty. Next slide. So our team used Heroku to host the CityPave web application. Heroku is a container-based cloud platform as a service that developers use to deploy, manage, and scale modern applications. Heroku facilitated the deploying process for our team by using Git to migrate source code into their Heroku Git using the same commands used to commit changes to GitHub. When changes need to be made to the deployed application, our team creates a new build in our local environment, and we then push the changes to the Heroku Git repository. Next slide. So citypave.app is the official web address of our web application, and it was purchased using Google Domains. Google Domains is a domain registration service uh, launched in January of 2015 by Google, and it uses your Google account information to log in and manage your domain. Their dashboard made it very effortless to assign the custom domain to our deployed web application on Heroku. Finally, our application uses SSL certificate to provide an end-to-end -end encryption to protect all web requests and to make sure information is transmitted securely. Up next is Christopher with a demo. All right, so this is the homepage of our app. I'm gonna go ahead and log in so we can get access to our projects. For new users, they would simply go to the register page and create their account here. I already have an account, so let's go ahead and use that. So this is a projects page. I've gone ahead and created four different projects, but the user is given the option to create as many projects as they'd like. All they need to do is go to the upper right-hand corner and use the new project button, choose a scenario type, and name it as they wish. For now, let's go ahead and demo scenario one, which is the determined payment structure project. As you can see, we've kept it very simple. We've added in some text boxes, some drop-down menus, very simple forms, just so to, just to alleviate any possible difficulties the user may experience when using a new application. Oh, another thing to note too, is I've actually gone ahead and input a lot of the information just for the sake of time. Another thing to note is that we've added in tool tips alongside a lot of the input values. So just in case the user gets a little stuck trying to come up with a key value, all you have to do is hover over the little question mark and it pops up a little piece of information that may help them with their, with their issue. 
For this page, we use dynamic tabs to give the user the option to manually input some values, or they can actually use the built-in calculator to come up with some key, key values. Let's go ahead and keep it simple now and just manually input this value here. This page also uses dynamic tabs as well. We gone ahead and added a dynamic tab to give the user the option of using multiple lists or single lists. Again, let's keep it at a single list here, just, to, just for the sake of simplicity. Uh, this page here allows the user to add in base layers to their project. They can also delete layers. Go ahead and one layer here. Another thing to note on this page is we've added in a calculator at the bottom of the page to help the user calculate the resilient modulus just in case they need that extra help. Finally, the design guidance page. This page holds the results for your whole project and we've actually formatted it in a specific way so that's easily printable, just, so, just in case the user needs it readily available and they're not next to their device. We've also given the user the option to add in design notes here at the bottom, just in case they want their notes alongside their uh, project results. And that concludes this demo. Up next, Kayleen. Thank you, Chris, for a wonderful demo. My name is Kayleen Ponce. I will be going over the accomplishments and roadblocks within our project. One of our roadblocks was learning a new language. Given that at school, majority of our classes are done in Java and Python, learning JavaScript was a new experience for the team. Vue was also a new framework for the team to learn. We overcame learning these new skills by watching tutorials and practicing on our own time. Designing the web application. Although this seems like an easy task, Coming up with a color scheme and design is especially important within a web development project. We did a lot of trial and error to figure out what would be perfect look for the user. Calculations. The calculations used by the web application are complex. Our team was able to meet with our liaison as much as time permitted to implement a number of them and to receive some clarifications so that they are accurate staying organized with, while online. Given that this is the first year that senior design or school for that matter has been online, it has brought a whole new difficulty to trying to work in a team setting. Thankfully, with the technologies used for our project, this kept the team on the same page and assisted in our success for this project. Next slide. Future plans. Three things for a future team to work on would be recapture box, password recovery, and map view. Although the web application does not need these, it would make it more secure for a user when creating an account, and also map view would be more appealing look for a user when making a project. Calculations. As shown in our project, there are many complex calculations that need more time and understanding. Moving forward, a new team would be able to jump right in and implement the calculations in the scenarios. Graphs to display calculations. Another idea after implementing the calculations is to implement a graph to display the data for the user to see visually. Next. In conclusion, this was an extraordinary experience for my team and I. From learning how to communicate in a team setting to Googling and watching YouTube for hours till we found the right video, to combining code with others without messing up the master branch on GitHub, the list can go on. We have learned so many real world skills that we can take into our future careers and projects. Thank you for your time. And this concludes our presentation.